So there's the guy, I don't know how much his jaw ate, but for hours, he had to clean a bathroom floor no. with a thumb. No. We are Myth Vision. Welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Lambert. Ladies and gentlemen, a special guest once again, Karen De La Carriere. Welcome back to Myth Vision. Derek, lovely to be back. I'm very thrilled with today's show that we're going to be talking about. The self-destruction of Scientology, the Iron Fist and Dark Heart. So... This gets into the creed. This gets into the beliefs and the foundation of Scientology. If you would, take us into this. Yes. The, the whole concept and doctrine of Scientology is talk to us. All those, those $50,000 you're going to spend is pay per, pay per hour. Pay as you go. You talk and you pay. Unlike the Catholic Church, you can go to confession. You may or may not leave a donation, but it's not paying by the minute. In Scientology, you pay by the minute, by the hour, to talk. Did you know that? Well, I knew that they definitely are getting money out of people, but it's interesting. They charge you to talk. Yes, <laughs> they charge you to talk. And they want to know your sexual conduct. Absolutely, every detail. What did you do for how long? What toy did you use? What position were you in? What fantasy did you have in your mind as you did it? I mean, the church make it their business. And masturbation is considered an absolute crime. I told you, one yeah. guy had to spend 3,000 just to give off one masturbation. So, <laughs> so you're talking. Some people do like to talk about their sexual activity, but they want to know when, where, how, who, with who, for how long. <laughs> and people can talk wow. endlessly and Scientology rakes in the money. They really wow. do. It seems like they really do. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the idea of the creeds, the creed of the Church of Scientology, you said it was well, not just you, but like this is the way it is. L. Ron Hubbard uh, wrote this shortly after the church was formed in Los Angeles on February 18, 1954. After Mr. Hubbard issued this creed from his office in Phoenix, Arizona, the Church of Scientology adopted it as its creed because it succinctly states what Scientologists believe. Th this, So they want your money. They get you in. Um, but this is the foundation, right? Like these are the creeds of what they believe. Yes. How is that relevant to the topic today? Well, I'd like you to just read that the creed says man has an inalienable right to talk freely, think freely, write freely. Inalienable means that which cannot be taken away under any condition. Inalienable. Inalienable. Can you just read that? Yeah, I'll read it verbatim. So it says, and this is the, the this is what really gets me. This is L. Ron Hubbard, right? The head honcho, the king of kings when it comes to Scientology. And this is what he has to say. That all men have inalienable rights to think freely, to talk freely, to write freely their own opinions, and to counter or utter or write upon the opinions of other, others. So he's like, it sounds like, you know, say what you want to say and don't feel obligated. It doesn't sound like there's any like repercussions. Everything seems good to go. Talk with no inhibitions, no reluctance, no reticence. There'll be no punishment. Um, and the conduct <laughs> inside is 180 degrees the opposite. You speak and you can get pulverized, made into a dot. May I tell you two little short stories? Just short Please. stories. 
I was with Hubbard on the Apollo and we were in the Mediterranean cruising. And every port we were in started kicking us out and didn't want us back. There were rumors that we were CIA. You see, we were a kind of mysterious ship, Derek, because we had no cargo. We weren't tourists, we were working it. <laughs> we weren't really visiting to spend money in the local. We, we were hardly, so what were we? What were we? If you don't have cargo and you're not a tourist ship, you may be a spy military, you're up to something. And these countries couldn't figure it out. They could not figure it out. And they saw some horrible things where Hubbard was ordering people to be thrown overboard. And the, the harbor people in the villages watched these punishments of young girls and old men and that that being hurled off the ship. <laughs> this, 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 this does not make for good public relations. So slowly, slowly, it built up to a point in Madeira off the coast of Spain where the local people started stoning the ship. Get out! And they were chanting, CIA, CIA. <laughs> they felt it was a spy ship. They couldn't. And then Hubbard decided, we're out of here. So we crossed the Atlantic to arrive in Charleston. And here's the story now. Every single person on the ship was quietly briefed. We're going to America. We're no longer going to cruise. These countries are historical. We're going to America. And then after telling you all this, they then slapped a very stern warning don't tell anyone. But every single person on the ship knew. Every, there's 400 crew. Everyone was briefed. And I did a stupid thing about it a day or so before landing. We never landed in Charleston. The IRS was waiting on the dock. The IRS, the DOJ, government agencies were waiting to get Hubbard. Waiting for the ship. They knew it was coming. And we took off and did went to the Caribbean. But I accidentally used the word landing. I mean, landing. I said something about landing. And landing is in the dictionary. It's not a confidential word. Epics. Epics means you go see a very high official who's going to punish you because of your non-ethical conduct. And I was assigned treason for mentioning, I may have said landing in America, but, but it, the whole, right. <laughs> so for saying something that the whole crew already knew about, I was assigned treason. And you said this and, around them? Pardon? Like you didn't say this to someone on the phone that, like, this is just crude. We were, I, there was no phone to any. <laughs> so you were just talking amongst Scientologists. A, a, not, not only Scientologists, a fellow dedicated clergy CEO member, right? And you well, got. Really knowledge reported me for saying something that was confidential. So this is, I mean, this not only does this run contrary to the creed, okay, 100%. But how dumb. I mean, everybody knew the same thing. You're not preach. You're preaching to the choir. The whole choir knows the story. And then it's like, hey, we said not to talk. Like you would think that they were trying to tell you not to let others know, meaning try to don't tell people we're landing. I don't understand the context, I guess. Is it am I missing something? Scientology has always been paranoid of internal secrets always right now if you walk into a scientology building 
you have to immediately sign some documents that you will never, ever go back and tell family or write on it or do anything to disclose what you have seen. Everything is secretive. And there's a paranoia about it. Mm. They have secrets. They have, they have secrets. And they don't want anyone to know what is going on behind closed walls. The only nearby comparison I get, sometimes I watch these shows on fundamental Church of Latter-day Saints, FLDS. They yeah. try to drive by, they hound you out of they very they want their land and their property and community. It's all secret, right? So uh, treason meant no pay, no, not gonna get the next day off work overtime get sleep deprivation and do amends like there's backlog filing which hasn't been done stay up till two in the morning get less sleep and do amends to come out of treason this is this is the whole oh. anyway i got treason for saying to a fellow worker who immediately reported me this is like the kg like didn't russia have this you could report any suspicion yeah. you're always reporting everything to some hierarchy so now that's story number one but i want to know what you talk to so many people there so many churches is there a paranoia of secrets of what goes on inside uh, uh, are churches highly embarrassed of their internal conduct? Is it all on lockdown, like in the cult of Scientology? I don't think there's a comparison on that level. You might could say in the Catholic Church for a while, the scandals were kept on lock, especially when priests were doing things to young men, uh, little girls, little boys. Um, sure, that's an example, but this cult, from day one seems to be built off of a lie that you have the freedom yeah. and then simultaneously saying, shut your mouth. Yeah. Don't you say a thing. Yeah. And that, that it like runs contrary to the entire creed. He wants the whole world to think you have an inalienable right. Da, 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 and then <laughs> turns around and is like, <laughs> yeah, like really? <laughs> Uh, nice try. The I other uh, I cannot talk to their parents or anyone without security on the line to be sure you didn't say anything negative. Mm. So speech, every letter that comes in is opened and read by security to see if there's some kind of hostile negative. And every letter you send out is screened by security. There is no free speech. And after you've been pummeled for saying something you shouldn't, people become more and more internalized and secretive about what they're thinking, about what they should say. So this is not a cult taking you higher and giving you freedom. All their, their promotion is Freedom from your baggage, freedom from your aberrations, freedom, freedom, freedom. But actually, you're more and more trapped. And the number one is trap. Trap is shut up. Yeah. Don't say anything because your best friend will write you up and you will be sent for punishment to ethics. So there is an analogy here. And then I want to get another story from you as we expose some names of people who had the goal, who had the to speak, out. <laughs> to speak out. And I'm glad they did. But if you go back in history to the early stages of Mormonism and Joseph Smith, wow. you will find some crazy stuff. But I can tell you one thing that they did. That cult had people ratting on people at the start. Now, today, it's not like that. They've... They've learned how to kind of uh, roll up. Now, you might do that with the FLDS, but like 
overall, and they're extreme, but overall, like Mormonism is not, you know, doing this hush hush all the time. We're con- like, we're looking over our shoulders and concerned. There have been moments like the bombing that happened back in the nineties. Um, I think it's in the nineties. There's times where they're like, Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? But in the early church, sisters and brothers, mothers and fathers, daughters ratted on each other and would tell on each other, mm-hmm. turn each other in. And mm-hmm. I just thought it was another thing. Interesting. One of those creeds that L Ron Hubbard has He says, and that no agency less than God, as if they believe in God, has the power to suspend or set aside these rights, the rights of free free thinking and writing and talking, these rights overtly or covertly. I mean, that literally is a contradiction. Like if there is one, that is it. And it's so obvious. And his own organization, the Scientologists are the ones literally going against the very creed of their church. It makes no sense. No, no sense. Oh, Derek, what the, what is written in policy and what is the actual, what Hubbard says and what he, how he actually, he's, he's got a wonderful text called what is greatness? And he says, above all, you forgive your fellow men, forgive, forgive, forgive. And yet fair game which is the prime senior number one policy of the churches, they will get, they will ax you if you step out of line. Mm. So it's vengeance. It's a vengeance cult. It's a revenge cult. But Hubbard writes, it looks so prosaic and beautiful. What is greatness? He's preaching as a doctrine. Forgive. (laughs) Scientology does anything but forgive you know recently two mormon missionaries came you know they were walking by in their white shirts and oh i felt poor these are young guys 21 and i i know what it's like to be in a cult i invited them in and said and they they got excited they thought they were going to get mormon converts <laughs> four babies i said can i can i order you a pizza come on you've been walking and walking come on in I'm an art dealer, and Thomas Kincaid did this magnificent, I'll send you the picture, of the cathedral, Salt Lake City, the the mountains, and the main statues of the Mormon church. Beautiful painting, vista, panoramic. And I showed them, and they were like, and I was watching them carefully, and I said, is it tough to be a missionary where you're just go for two years and they weren't allowed to say anything negative they looked at each other like they couldn't say god we're exhausted they they couldn't they had to and i was thinking this is Mm. these poor mormon missionaries anyway i gave them some good food and said you know i i just came out of a cult (laughs) i can't i can't i just i I came out of a, I think I used the word church not to be offensive because otherwise they would think I'm calling Mormonism. Right. Scientology. You have to, you have to, you have to understand, but I want to, uh, I want to wish you well and gave them some good food. I don't know what they thought of me. I was being. Wow. You know, the, the thing is that the moments, you know, for two years to be it, you have to just go preach, just like Jehovah's Witnesses have to go door to door, right? That's one thing about a church. They, they're bound and determined to expand by roping you in, right? Exactly. But that you have to give me some comparisons. Don't all church just want more members? Yeah, you would think oh, that Scientology. Huh? huh? What no, is that? You tell me some compare. Do I, you know of any church that doesn't have a burning thrust to expand their membership? No, I can't think of a church that doesn't. But Scientology, as you've told me, it make they make no sense in many ways. They don't, they're not doing this process. They're hoping that these celebrities that they're catering to will somehow convince people. I think that's their missionary style. They're not 
going out of their way, bending over backwards to try and like create more Scientologists by having them have kids. And that's, what's weird. That's, what's really weird. If I may, um, you, you said you had a second story and maybe you don't, I wanted to show the, a list of people. I can tell my second story while you show that. Now, remember Scientology will harm you. It will pulverize you. It will take your, disintegrate your family if you speak out. And this is the list of well over 3,000 people who've spoken out on television, talked to journalists, talked to authors of books on Scientology, written to blogs, written on Tony Ortega's daily blog, written on Mike Rinder's blog, written in forums, 3,000 and more, 3,065, whatever, to date have spoken out, especially on YouTube videos. He's scrolling down a list so the audience can see, first of all, there are tens of thousands of people that departed Scientology, tens of thousands. But these brave people, knowing Scientology's vindictiveness, spoke out. My mm. God, you're only up to F. You have to scroll faster. <laughs> I know. I'm trying. I'm. I'm. I'm literally pressing down. But if you Why keep don't going, I talk about story number two. Here's to show you we're halfway through now. <laughs> There's so many people. I'm going fast now. And it actually tells you where they spoke out, what TV show, what da, 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 da. it gives you. Wow. Gives you. So. Uh, That's the end. Story number two was, uh, again, my voice led me into the darkest, darkest period of my life. Here's what happened. Three top, top executives, heads rolled, and they were sent to the prison camp known as RPF, Rehabilitation Project Force. This is, this is a prison camp. This is, ooh. <laughs> no privileges. If you're married, you can't even talk to your spouse. You, 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 you're completely, utterly, the only people you can speak to is other people in the same prison camp. And because they were the highest of the high, other than David Miscavige, it was earth shattering news. And I told one, remember I worked, my husband was, and is the international president of the Church of Scientology. And I was his assistant in the area of the church called Office of Special Affairs, which is a reincarnation of the Guardian's Office. This is the section of the cult that handles all legal lawsuits, all PR, public relations, when the BBC is going to do a, yet another hostile blurb on Scientology, public relations going to act, handle all public relations to do with the cult. Legal, PR, and intelligence. Intelligence is their spy network, where in every country they hire a massive amount of private investigators, lawyers, because they feel the way they handle their enemies is first to get the dirt on them. Mm -hmm. First handle getting all the intel, the intelligence. So Office of Special Affairs isn't delivering technology, it's protecting the church with intelligence, legal, and PR. I told someone in the church that these three, but I only knew about this because I was in this high echelon office of special right. care, and I told someone. And this person told someone and it spread around. Now, three weeks later, an issue came, a declaration came out and everybody was told 
but I had trumped this issue of David Miscavige announcing. Boy, I, <laughs> I was ripped out of LA. I had a two-year-old son who was left there alone because he, my husband, he, the president, were sent off to Germany on an emergency. I was ripped off and I was confined to the church. This was exactly like FLDS. This is, I was incarcerated in a place that I didn't belong to, that I wasn't even staff of for six months. And Derek, it was hell. It was hard manual labor and it was interrogatories. I would be hauled out of bed at two in the morning with insufficient food and sleep and put on the cans and questioned over and over again. Are you planning to go to the Los Angeles Times? Have you decided to go talk to the IRS? These were outlandish questions to me because up till then, I was totally loyal. <laughs> totally. I, I was a clown. This is know? like, this is like the local, like, this is like the family member who's on crack. And when you walk in the house and they're peeping out the window blinds, you're like, what's wrong? And they're like, you don't hear that? You don't hear that? The police are coming. And you're going, no, what is going on with you? And they're like, are you going to the LA Times? Are you going to the IRS? Are you going to contact the FBI? What are you doing? What are you doing, Karen? That's what it sounds like. It's funny that it, it was predicting futuristic because after I left, I did go to multiple government <laughs> and they know all the stories. Maybe they planted I those seeds. I of people to talk to. I absolutely... The, self-fulfilling prophecy but they stoned me and just completely used a sledgehammer because i said something i didn't give out their confidential vt attached spirit their high secretive upper levels i didn't do it then i thought i'm gonna now but they sledgehammered me and then they came to the conclusion I must have been psychiatrically implanted. The psychiatrist must have put negative thoughts in my head for me to be, be so bad. And I got the bizarre questions like, did you have anesthesia at the dentist and were hypnotic commands given you into your head? No. Well, by now, I'd asked to leave, and that, now, now they thought she's psychiatric. She's psychiatric, but I was clean as a, my life histories were there. I <laughs> had no psychiatric anything. So they then had to hold the cans, and over and over, it was, "Do you see things in the night that?" They, they were talking to me like I was some kind of lunatic. It was later I learned that there's this wonderful word called gaslighting. Have you heard of the word gaslighting? Yes. There was a movie in the 1930s where a man wanted to drive his wife insane. So he would cook up different things. And when she was stunned, he would say, there's something wrong with your head. You must be mental. I may need to put you in a mental institution. But he was setting her up and it was, that's what the movie was called, gaslighting. Yeah, for those who don't know what gaslighting is, it's a form of abuse that yes. causes someone to doubt their own sanity or perception. So doubt it happens all the time. Doubt. In fact, a lot of people do that when they're in infidelity or lying situations. So they'll tell their spouse or whatever, uh, you're crazy. No, you are losing it. But really, uh, yeah. oftentimes, they're gaslighting their spouse, causing them to really think, I am losing it. Why am I doubting you? But really, you are up to no good or whatever. So, yeah, they're doing that with you. And uh, hard to read what their motives are in terms of whether they really think you really are up to no good or not. But 
it almost is like they're wanting you to just come out and be the bad guy. Just come out and admit it. You're this or that. And, and you weren't. That's the sad thing. Derek, that's well spoken. See, I just want the audience to know I am by no means the only person that endured this kind of thing. Absolutely not. Hundreds of people, thousands even, have been through this routine. I'm noisy and I talk a lot. And I'm, and I'm willing to disclose it. I'm older now. I want all these stories out there so they're there. After I'm dead, people can know what life was in Scientology. But I was by no means the only person. This is the self-destruct in Scientology's DNA. Mm. They pick bright, willing people, willing to work hard for them, willing to do whatever. I was flown around the world as a celebrity when I was... In the, in, in the 1970s, early 1980s. Hubbard trained Karen Delacan, and I was flown all over the world to give speeches on the goodness of Scientology, and hundreds of people still connect with me. See, you came over and you gave that speech, you electrified the audience, blah, blah, blah. So suddenly I'm this evil psychiatric misfit the person that they promoted all over the world as the Scientology number one speaker, blah, blah, blah. Now, they want to know if psychiatrists fiddled with my mind because I'm asking to leave. <sighs> Only a psychiatric lunatic. Oh, and it had to come from psychiatry, you see? Yeah, Except once music, again. All bad flows from psychiatry. Yeah. Well, that was the darkest part of my life, Derek. This was six months of hell. I was separated from my kid. I And he was a two-year-old. And he was in Germany. And nobody would give me any data on how long I was going to be punished for. And my only crime was saying something. So much for free speech. Yeah, it sounds like clearly, as we said in the outline, ultimately, here's a creed. And it's a creed, it's a frontal, it's like a front creed. It's to get you in the door. Then once you're in, you better shut up. You better keep it hush hush. You better not, especially with someone like you who went OT8. I mean, you went all the way. And like, you know, you better be quiet. Like there is no, that creed stops working after you've even like gone through a little bit of levels here. I didn't do OT8. I did up to OT7. OT8 materials were sent to me. So I had the exact rundown, but okay. class 12 CS is as high as you possibly can go. Jeez. So, so, you know, I, I. How much really did you pay in all, if you can recall, just so they could tell you to shut your mouth. How much did they pay? How much did you have to pay, Karen? That I don't know. I'd put it this way. If you gave me as much money as you gave them, I would listen to you 24-7. I'd never tell you to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, once I joined staff, all those... Well, Derek, what I want to tell you is it is in the Scientology DNA to destroy their brightest and their best. If you could just see how they attacked Mike Rinder, who was the church spokesman for 20 years. Mm. Now, I, I mean, it's I, I'm not even going to repeat some of the things they say, but what it is is they cannibalize and destroy their own. What, what church does that? Don't they value stuff that are high producers? And why, how, how, how can anything like this have sustainability? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. I don't see any churches, even when the scandals in the Catholic Church came out that little children were being messed with, the church tried to defend them through and through. Okay, it, it was like legal actions that took place that caused these churches to really take action and to like change the situation because they used to just 
find out that there were these reports coming in from a certain local priest in a certain area, and then they would just lift that priest and relocate them. Oh, yeah. And, and they'd be somewhere else doing it to some other kid. And yeah. eventually law got set in and like it became yeah. a problem for the church to the point where they had to do something. Whereas in Scientology, you could say the wrong word and become <laughs> the enemy. And you were the chief guy who did all the spokes. It's it's like almost like making one of the top bishops or cardinals of the Roman Catholic Church, multiple of them, enemies of the Roman Catholic Church. You really don't. I don't even know. It's it's such a confusing system, but it destroys their entire foundation. Because if the Roman Catholic Church did that, every time you turn around, someone at the top is – can you trust anything coming from any of these people? No. I can't imagine that. It's almost like um, – I could show you a case where a Catholic – there's a Catholic uh, pope, if you will, you know, Roman Catholic pope, who was doing debauchery things, right? That didn't well, stop the Catholic Church from being, you know, a church. But a lot of people probably see that and go, no, thank you. Now, imagine if it wasn't just the Pope, meaning it's not just David Miscavige. It's the whole shebang that's doing this, and they're eating themselves. Oh. So the only reason I think David isn't the one that's been treated this way and removed is because without him, if he goes, they know that the collapse of the whole thing goes. So he is the only thing I think the bones that keeps this system. I just don't, I don't know. I think they know that this is it. If he goes, I don't see how it's going to keep going. Those are excellent points, Derek. I, I wanted to just add one thing. When Scientology goes into this rampage to destroy you, because you're stepping out of line, you said something you shouldn't have said, you're critical, you know, complaining about something, blah, blah, blah. One thing I just want to add is Scientology punishment always, always incurs great humiliation. It isn't just, all right, go clean that room and swab the floors. And it's, you're going to clean the bins outside with a toothbrush. 12 hours a day. You're going to clean toilets. All the toilets have to be white gloved, nonstop, 14 hours a day, you're going to clean nothing but toilet. The, the punishments always have a hook. There was this wonderful Swedish guy, I go blank on names, remember I couldn't remember Steven Spielberg the other day. This wonderful, and David Miscavige, made him lick the bathroom floor with his tongue as a punishment. So there's the guy, I don't know how much his jaw ate, but for hours he had to clean a bathroom floor no. with his tongue. No. And you know, the indoctrination is so deep. He did the punishment. Do you know he's still in the C organization? No. He did the punishment, and I was asking, we were talking about the other day, and said, wonder what happened to, this is a tall Nordic guy from Sweden or Norway. He licked the bathroom floor, and then that became a fashion or a fad. It traveled down from, because David Miscavige ordered that, at flag and clear order. An ethics officer made somebody clean the floor with his tongue. Derek, Derek, the punishments are not just straight punishment. They have a twist of the knife to humiliate. I'm, I'm image like the, the picture is in my head and I want to oh. get it out. There are more. I would rather lick different things all day before I would lick the floor of a bathroom. That is disgusting. I mean, that, that's the most humiliating. Derek, look at the obedience level. Yeah. He ordered it and he did it. The compliance, you're, you're molded into such a framework that when senior authority says jump, you say, How high, sir? There, you've lost your critical thought. Yeah. You've lost your ability even to withstand. 
hey, we've gotten a little grim here. We've got to lift the audience upward, upward, upward. <laughs> wow. Because it's, it's dark. And, but so many of us that were movers and shakers in are doing fantastic outside who are really thriving. You know, I run a big forum of ex scientologists and my goodness, we were warned if you leave the, if you leave us, you will be flipping McDonald's burgers at minimum wage and you'll be living under a bridge, homeless. You think you can just walk out the door and you're going to live happily ever after? You will be flipping burgers. And tons of us told each other, <laughs> the same, the same spiel was given. You'll be flipping burgers. Well, I want the world to know I run a fabulous international gallery. Um, uh, I'm continuing to grow in my own way. I'm still spiritual, Darius. <laughs> Your audience is for me. No, I, no, no, they won't. No, not religious at all. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. I get it. Religion. But there are people who watch my channel that are spiritual. Oh, so okay. don't don't feel bad. Trust me. I'm, I'm I'm a yeah. spirit, and that. I will die, but my soul will live on. <laughs> right, right. That's 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 my definition of spiritual. It's not, but but it isn't. I just don't want to just toot my horn. I live and breathe and talk with others all the time. Can I can I plug something? I, I just want everyone to know you also have a YouTube channel. I really want them to go subscribe to it. You have a lot of great, wonderful videos where you talk about these things and you go in depth. You just launched a little clip that we did, which was awesome. I saw that the other day and I went and liked it. There's ones we've done in the past as well. And, and you know, the famous legend himself, you know, uh, I really think that everyone should see Ron Miscavige. If they can go over there, they'll see you've done a lot with him over the years. So I just want to do that little plug. You've been successful and it's given you something as a hobby but you're also feeling like you're paying back for all the years you put in. You're helping people to wake up and some people from ever going in to begin with. So you're doing your work. You're doing, if I may say it, you're doing God's work, Karen. <laughs> oh, what a lovely thing to say. I, Derek, I've never been happier. Never. I have, I have a certain peace. I have my animals. I, my life is custom designed. It, if a designer had to cut out the way your life should be, I, I, I truly, truly am enjoying the last years of my life. Um, Good for you. And, and more importantly, whatever soul or incarnation I'm in, no more gurus, no more cults. I've learned deep and important lessons. I think your creed is today, be true to yourself, no matter what, you know, and, and the golden rule, do unto others as you'd want done unto yourself. And this is Karen's philosophy. This is Karen's creed. And this is a creed I think anyone should have. So when they tell you, you can speak freely, take it from someone who's been there, they're full of it. <laughs> Stay away from Scientology. Well spoken, Derek. Well spoken. Thank you, Karen. I guess uh, till next time. Yeah, make sure you like the video. Go check out her YouTube channel. Leave wonderful comments. You know, drop comments that you would want to have dropped on your videos if you ever had videos. Be kind. Because ask, Karen ask, is ask Derek and ask questions you'd like Derek and I to answer. Yeah, maybe we'll do a live sometime and yeah. you and me can hang out and ask questions of the audience and, you yeah. know, really just go wherever we want to go. So yeah, that's fun. Thank you so much. I appreciate thank you. Very. Never forget, ladies and gentlemen, here is our chant. We are Mythvision. Vision.